assalamu alaikum dear learners in this part of the lecture i am going to explain various signal processing methods and techniques that can be implemented using active devices so the first one is the amplification apart from filtering there are many other signal processing techniques that can be utilized to prepare our signal for subsequent stages the first and the most used technique is amplification amplification simply means to increase the amplitude of the incoming signal normally you have to increase the amplitude of the signal in situations where the sensor is producing a very weak signal and using that weak signal or routing that weak signal through the system will be a tough job once again there are active instruments and passive instruments that can achieve this amplification but as i have already said in the case of filters passive filters or passive instruments are not being used nowadays because for a number of reasons we will stick with the active instruments only over here once again the whole thing or the whole circuit becomes active because of the inclusion of an active component into the circuit as you already know that resistors and capacitors are passive devices but this operational amplifier is an active device it requires its own power source to function that is why it is called an active device you must have studied the working of an operational amplifier in some course related to electronic devices and circuits therefore it would be out of the scope of this course to discuss that how the output voltage is equal to the ratio of the resistance multiplied with the input voltage using this result we can easily see that whatever is the input voltage it is being multiplied with the ratio of the resistance that is used in this circuit and that will make the output voltage so if the value of r2 resistance is twice than the value of r1 resistance then the ratio would be 2 that is the gain or the amplification factor will be 2 and if the input voltage is 5 volts for example then the output voltage would be 10 volts on the contrary the opposite of amplification is called attenuation it is exactly the same thing but in attenuation the output amplitude will be lesser than the input amplitude you can easily see that if the value of r1 is larger than the value of r2 then the amplification factor or the gain of this circuit would be less than 1 and if the input voltage is multiplied with anything less than 1 the output voltage would be lesser than the input voltage or you can say that the input voltage will be attenuated now let us talk about a differential amplifier by the name it suggests that it is going to amplify the difference present between the two signals if you can remember i said in the previous lecture that one easy way of removing inductive coupled noise is to use a twisted pair cable over there i said that the inductive coupled noise will affect the signal equally in both wires of a twisted pair cable therefore at the end if you take the difference of the signal present in both wires then the common things in that signal will cancel out each other now how are you going to take the difference of both wires and work on that difference well a differential amplifier is just for this case it is going to take the difference of the two signals and then can amplify the remaining signal so by equation over here you can see that you are going to take the difference of two voltages and then the resulting voltage with some factor that can amplify or attenuate this difference the circuit for implementation of this differential amplifier is shown over here and the two signals that is va and vb are vs and 0 volts respectively so the voltages v1 and v2 are represented by these equations whereas the output voltage is represented by this equation a bit of simplification will bring us to this result provided you have use these values of the resistances as one of the incoming voltage was zero in the final equation vb is not present another thing to notice over here is that the output voltage has been inverted that is it has 
a different sign than the input voltage Vs. A modification or possibly you can call an upgradation of a simple differential amplifier is called an instrumentation amplifier. This amplifier has certain advantages over simple differential amplifier. You must know that one of the basic advantage of using an operational amplifier is that it shows high input impedance. Therefore, to start off, an instrumentation amplifier has a much higher input impedance as compared to a simple differential amplifier. Secondly, it is much more effective and efficient in removing the common things present in the two signals. That is, it has a much higher common mode rejection ratio, which is abbreviated as CMRR. Normally, in practical uses, wherever a twisted pair cable is used, an instrumentation amplifier is used to get the difference of the signals and work on that. However, if you simply need the difference of any two signals not possibly coming from a twisted pair cable, then a differential amplifier can be used. In some of the practical transducers, it is common problem that they generate a nonlinear output. The nonlinear output can have various forms and one of the form is an exponential output. An exponential output is attributed to specially thermocouples. We have talked about this problem that for automatic feedback control systems, a nonlinear output of the transducer is not an issue. But for human observations, a nonlinear output can cause serious problems. So the circuit shown over here can easily linearize an exponential signal. I won't be going into the mathematical details that how this result has been achieved and I will never ask you anything about it during evaluations as well because it is not what this course is about. A very good use of differential amplifier can be to remove the zero drift present in the signal. As the differential amplifier is subtracting two voltages, if one of the voltage can be adjusted using a simple rheostat, then you can easily remove any bias present in the signal. If you have used an oscilloscope or a palm scope, you must have adjusted the dials while taking readings to remove the bias. All you needed to do was adjust the dial and it will shift the represented signal on the y-axis and you would have adjusted the dial unless you get zero reading when zero input was applied. The circuit shown over here is capable of integrating the input voltage. During the implementation of automatic feed control, integration of voltage signal is a very important task. And to perform this thing in the analog domain, these kind of circuits may be used. This brings me to a very, very important component used in analog signal processing. And this thing is called a voltage follower. By the look of the circuit, it is a very straightforward and simple one. But the advantages of this simple circuit are far more important than you can even imagine. The circuit utilizes the main construction principle of an operational amplifier, that is high input impedance. If you can relate this circuit with the amplifier circuit, then you can easily figure out that this circuit is doing nothing but amplification with a gain of one. Now, how will it benefit us? If I can briefly recall that what an operational amplifier is, then the first thing you would have studied about operational amplifier is that ideally no current flows into the operational amplifier. And it is because of the high input impedance. If no current is flowing into the wire, then what will it mean? It will mean that whatever is attached on the other side of the operational amplifier will not draw any current from the input side of the operational amplifier. If no current is being drawn by the output side components, then it will mean that the output side components are not loading any portion of the input side circuit. Therefore, if you want to attach anything with the circuit, for example, a simple voltmeter, then no matter how sophisticated voltmeter you are using, it will draw some current from the circuit and will load the whole circuit. But only if you have used a voltage follower between the circuit and the voltmeter, then 
this voltage follower will not allow the voltmeter to draw any current from the circuit and hence the circuit will not be loaded at all. This kind of voltage follower is used everywhere where we want to isolate one part of the circuit from the other part so that no current should flow from the first part to the second part of the circuit. The voltage follower is also called a buffer and is widely used whenever you are working with microcontrollers and other kinds of ICs. A voltage comparator is another very important application of an operational amplifier. Its operation is as simple as it looks. The output of this circuit will be saturated on the positive side or the negative side depending on the comparison between the two input voltages. For example, if V2 is larger than V1, then the output would be saturated on the positive side whereas it will be saturated on the negative side if the case is opposite. We can have a modified version of a voltage comparator as well. In this case, the input voltage is compared to an upper reference voltage and a lower reference voltage. So if the input voltage exceeds the upper reference voltage, the output would be positive, for example, and if it drops below the lower reference voltage, the output would be negative. These kind of voltage comparators are however seldomly used in any industry because of various issues of compatibility with the voltage level used in the industrial setup. There are many other kind of integrated circuits that can mimic the behavior of a voltage comparator and which are much more better than this version. This simple circuit can be used to sum up voltages. The output of this circuit would be the sum of three voltages applied at the input side. There may arise situations where you have to add certain voltages for arriving at the mean voltage or to do something else. In such cases, voltage addition will come in handy. Apart from these circuits which I have discussed in this lecture, there are many other active analog signal processing methods and circuits. However, I am going to stop my discussion on analog signal processing over here and will continue with the digital signal processing concepts in the next lecture. I hope you have understood the shallow concepts that I tried to relay in this lecture. It is highly recommended to go through the reference book and revise the concepts of operational amplifiers to better understand these circuits. Furthermore, it is recommended to think of one practical device where you have used an operational amplifier or where an operational amplifier based device is used to perform any task and write it in the comment section. This was everything from my side. Take care and goodbye.